Welcome to the session today, which is how to become more commercial. My name is Neil Wilkins, and I'm going to be your host for this session, which is a really, really uh, fascinating topic, actually, because it is applicable to each and every one of us, whether or not we are a seasoned professional, you've been in commercial worlds for decades, or whether you're starting out on your career journey, we can all afford to become more commercial, learning new things, learning new steps, just really taking a different set of perspectives on the world around us, um, both from an internal perspective, but also looking um, more broadly at the, the wider world. So there's a host of things to consider in this topic of becoming more commercial. And I'm going to talk to you as we go through this session about a number of um, well, very practical things that you can do to begin this kind of new habit, if you like, if this isn't something that necessarily has resonated with you um, sort of before, or it's something that you feel is kind of beyond your day job, um, I'm here to kind of challenge that that might not necessarily be a correct perception and that we can all benefit from becoming more commercial. Uh, I'm going to use the chat facility and the Q&A facility here on this uh, particular uh, call today. So if there's any questions that you have as I'm going through, hopefully uh, I'll get a chance at the end of the session uh, to answer those uh, for you. So uh, yes, add your comments or your observations uh, and you're able to disagree as well. More than happy to be challenged on any of the things I'm going to share with you as always within this, uh, this webinar series. So let's, let's kind of think about the broader context before we get down into the detail of the how. Let's just kind of think about the why. Um, I love this quote, uh, which came from Harvard Business Review around four or five years ago uh, from Beth Comstock, who was the former CMO at GE, um, who said, marketing's job is never done. It's about perpetual motion and we must continue to innovate every day. And so it is about continuous learning. I know we hear this word continuous improvement, all these words uh, sort of you know, banded around um, without much thought. But actually, when you stop and reflect on them, it is so, so important. And one of the really, really key things as a marketer, as a business professional, as a communicator, if you're in PR, if you're in any type of comms sort of role, it isn't just about the comms. It is about looking at what you do in the context of adding value to the higher purpose of your organization or to bring and deliver value to all of the stakeholders around your organization. And you can't do that by standing still. So there is a really important thing that we need to really almost agree at the outset here is that if you're going to become more commercial, you have to embrace continuous innovation, continuous improvement, and I would argue continuous self-development. So this is something that you can't just rock up to a single webinar and say, hey, I've you know been to this webinar, okay, and now I'm more commercial. This is something that is there ever present and challenging you every single moment of every single day. So this is really something that you need to embrace, to embody and to reflect upon at every moment that you can. And so it becomes a really, I would argue, kind of dynamic approach, which is the key to successful marketing. I, I know a lot of my peers who have been you know, in marketing for many, many years, as I have, um, they kind of still working to a, almost an old style of marketing, for example, which is very much about delivery. It's very much about, you know, developing campaigns and new products and services to in, in an attempt to deliver value to the organization. But they're kind of working to an old agenda. So for me, I kind of try and understand how marketing is evolving, challenge myself every single day with, you know, could I do what I was doing yesterday better? Yeah, some of the old principles principles will still apply, but is there a way I can, you know, use and um, sort of think about those principles as almost the foundations from which I can grow and flourish in the future by doing things differently? And if I can, then hopefully then I'm going to keep abreast of any changes of my customers' needs and their behaviours, 
uh, trends in the marketplace. And let's face it, you know, every single industry right now is changing, you know, almost beyond recognition from what it was last year, as well as, you know, things like new technologies. You know, we're all talking about the impact of AI and metaverse and sustainability within marketing. So how are all those things going to come together? Because if you can get a view on those things, you don't necessarily have to be 100% correct, but you have to have a view. You have to be thinking about the impact of these things on your role, on your team, on your department, on your organization, and on marketing more generally. And so our journey today, if we're looking to become more commercial, is to become more commercially focused marketers. And it really begins with the acceptance of I am not complete. I am not a finished article as a marketer. You know, and I've been doing this thing for a long, long time. And I often, you know, particularly at the beginning of weeks or particularly at the beginning of new projects, think, wow, this is so exciting. This is so kind of invigorating because I'm just starting out. So I've been doing this stuff for like three and a half decades. And yet some days I just feel like this is a brand new beginning. Look at this stuff. Wow, we're beginning again. And I think with that mindset comes a high level of energy comes a high level of acceptance that you really don't know it all and it's okay not to know it all because for lots of these things we're working from a lack of a playbook and I've used this phrase a lot recently is that you know with a lot of these new emerging opportunities for us to become more commercial with these trending things that are coming at us and presenting themselves you know, there is no playbook, there is no right or wrong. So we're looking to become commercially minded and commercial marketers by thinking about opportunity, challenging and prioritizing, not necessarily saying yes to everything, but just becoming more mindful of what is going on around us and not being on, as I would term it, a very simple single hamster wheel where we're just constantly repeating round and round again, the same old stuff. So I think we're going to see that as we kind of come through here. And it is about the need for a commercial mindset. So what we're talking about here is that it's just about being kind of there. It's about being present. It's about being really conscious of what is actually going on. And this is the start of a commercial mindset. Um, lovely quote here from the founder and CEO of um, Dan Goat Group. Um, again, from a few years back, but still applies right here, right now. And this, this really great quote is, to build a successful business, you must start small and dream big. In the journey of entrepreneurship, tenacity of purpose is supreme. So it's as much as, and I would argue probably more so, it is about the mindset of being more commercial than it is actually about how what you do plays out. And what I mean by that is not that you just think, OK, my mindset's commercial right now. I'm a commercial marketer. It's, it's more than that, because clearly you have to put things into action. But once you've set the mindset that I am curious, I am like a sponge, I am not complete, I'm also patient with myself that I'm not expecting to crack this in one go, and I'm willing to take a journey. Once you've got that mindset, that commercial mindset that it is about improving every day on in every kind of way that's possible, then you start to take on what I would really say is a, a very significant role of having this mindset over and above all of the, the technicalities of your profession and what you do. And what you're able to do then is to balance really interestingly this kind of higher level strategic aim alongside building little small achievements. OK, so this is about spotting almost at a forensic level, little opportunities, little moments, things that somebody might say that could be worth exploring, something that maybe happens in some of the analytics or the measurements that you're taking through your dashboards, et cetera, et cetera, and thinking, hold on a minute. There's a little sign here. I don't quite understand what it means. I don't quite get what it's telling me, but there's something in that. And of course, if you have a commercial mindset, always switched on, always mindful, always present and conscious, then you stand much more of a chance of spotting these little moments because you're awake. And this whole process of being commercial is about being awake. And you will miss stuff. I mean, you know, just the nature of being a human being is you cannot be perfect. So you will miss stuff, but that's okay. Because on balance, 
you'll probably encounter more opportunities than you otherwise would have, which opens up then opportunities to bring commercial value. So just by purely being awake means that you're on the starting line. So you stand a chance of winning in this game. And if you can do this with always having this filter of your overarching business, corporate or commercial objectives. And I don't I'm not talking here about your goals for your social media accounts or you know what you want to achieve with this particular campaign. I'm talking higher level so that no matter what level you are in the organization, you know what your business is up to. You know what the purpose is. You know what this year's goals are. And they themselves become this kind of filter that allows you to filter in and out some of these opportunities for further consideration. So when you get presented with this little opportunity, so you spot something and you think, hold on, Neil, got to stop here, because that could be something, then these business objectives allow you then to prioritize in, or maybe park for now, or maybe discount that opportunity. Because of course, if you don't do it with that filter, you will just by the nature of being awake and alert and conscious and present, you will be opening up the floodgates for innovation coming at you from every single angle. So you've got to start with some filters. So great, yeah, having a, a positive mindset or a, a balanced mindset or a, a curious mindset, that is part of this journey. But you also need to have the filter of your higher level business objectives to be able to almost temper that enthusiasm because already, and you can probably hear it in my voice, I love this stuff. So it is exciting. It will fuel you. It does invigorate, particularly on a, a rainy Monday morning when you're going into the office and you think, oh, another week. It will turn everything on its head and it will open up, you know, a great place and a great way of working. But you do then need to temper the enthusiasm with, OK, we've got to be commercially pragmatic here. So we need to be filtering in the good stuff and maybe parking or reducing the other stuff. So you will find just by entering into this mindset, a real interplay um, of kind of being entrepreneurial, because this is an entrepreneurial mindset and actually commercial success because you do not want to overload yourself with noise and chaos and opportunity to the detriment of actually getting stuff done and actually completing the priorities which are already delivering value against your business goals. So it's about being a little bit sensible, but an excited little puppy dog with a waggy tail at the same time. So it's an interesting balance there, but there is this word and the key word here is interplay. That's the really the key thing to remember here, the interplay between balancing being pragmatic and prioritized and planful with this innovative entrepreneurial mindset. So open up the opportunities, but then maybe keep them slightly reined in until you find the ones that you know are good to go and then let those go at 100 miles an hour with 100% commitment. But just a little bit of pragmatism to start will enable you to kind of get this thing right and balanced. So where, where can we kind of start to find these things? I mean, I'm talking here about opportunities. So I've said, yeah, it's going to come through in some of the reports that you'll see. Um, but a lot of the time, it's going to come through from just keeping an eye on the wider marketplace. You would not believe, well, maybe you would, but you possibly wouldn't believe the number of marketers I talk to who simply do not have a feed in from the big wide world. They are so locked into their little ivory tower of what they do day to day that they're missing the opportunities that are going on around them. Oh, it's not part of my job or, oh, that's above my pay grade is often a, an excuse that I've heard over the years. Well, it's your choice. You don't have to buy into this stuff. But if you want to become a more commercially mindful, conscious, present marketer, then you need to understand market dynamics. Another nice quote here from uh, a real guru of marketing, uh, Peter Drucker, who said, the aim of marketing is to know and understand the customer so well that the product or service fits them and sells itself. And this can happen. I've seen evidence of this happening is that, you know, if you're truly commercially minded, yes, it is by definition, about the numbers. Yes, it is about, you know, have we hit our targets and objectives? But at the same time, it's about balancing that with a really clear, a clear knowledge and insight of the dynamics within the marketplace. Not a fixed perfection of exactly where the market is, 
but a real understanding that this thing ebbs and flows. This thing is trending upwards, neutral or downwards, that some days, some weeks, some months are going to be great out there in the marketplace and other times it's on the slide. It's all about knowing which way is the graph trending and that there will, within the graph, be peaks and troughs on our journey. It's also about understanding how our customers are migrating, how they're moving, how they're evolving, what they're looking for, how they define what is value. And if we're not looking and listening and thinking about this stuff and reflecting on it on an ongoing basis, we're missing a trick. We are genuinely not commercial marketers if we're not really thinking about this stuff and almost kind of waking up in the middle of the night with a little brainwave where you think, oh, hold on a minute, that thing I was doing yesterday, I need to just make a note of that. You know, if you're not operating at that level where it becomes part and parcel of how you think and that's feeding into your consistent mindset, then there's still work to be done. Now, this is something that will play out in, you know, a clear shaping of your products and services, because if you're really understanding how the market's moving, the little subtleties of, you know, how your products and services are being used, obviously, but how this stuff at a broader level can be impacting on your business strategy, as well as on your marketing plans. Because if you can spot some trends, if you can just be there listening, watching, not necessarily doing very much, but just being open and patient to spot these trends, then these will allow you to adapt what you're doing to a changing marketplace. I have a couple of clients right now who are very, very mindful of how the competition works, but um, both of them actually um, take very, very little notice of the broader kind of macro situation. Um, you know, it comes and hits them between the eyes or hits them in the checkbook um, before they've actually had a chance to really adapt. So they're always reactive. They're always playing catch up to the market dynamics. And what I'm trying to help them to do is see that maybe this should be making the management team meeting each month, that maybe we should be sitting down and talking about the higher level market dynamics, feeding in kind of a sense of really how our customers and our wider stakeholders are viewing the world. You know, how are they seeing, you know, sustainability, for example, how are they interacting or not uh, with AI? You know, how is their world changing and moving? Because if the competition finds things that we haven't been watching and then adapts products and services and the offering and the way that they communicate with the customer and we haven't, well, then we're always going to be playing catch up because the value add has come from them, not us. And it then in inspires us then to really think about ways and reflect on ways to adapt to those changing market trends. And this word trends comes through again. I've said it three or four times already, but it's so, so key. A commercial marketer or somebody who is commercially sensitive is obsessed with trends. We know from economics that go back centuries that everything is on a cycle. Kondratiev cycles, which I know I talk a lot about, but they're so, so interesting. Um, look up Kondratiev cycles um, in economics, um, uh, philosophy and theory, because it will give you a sense of the ever increasingly quick patterns of these cycles. So things that used to take 20, 30 years to change are now changing within a decade or within even five years. Things that used to change every year are now down into the cycle of months. The world is changing and getting ever faster. So part of our reasoning for being commercial is to be more fleet of foot, more adaptive, more responsive. And this will be something that comes alongside that mindset of entrepreneurialism. And what it'll allow us to do is to leverage the customer knowledge that we have for improved business outcomes. What do I mean by that? Sounds quite jargony. But what I mean is that it needs to be a win-win. So by being open, being a sponge, being absorbing of these kind of trends and opportunities gives us an opportunity as well to then have those deeper conversations with the customer and say, look, we're seeing that AI is coming onto our radar where we're kind of understanding that some people in the business are doing this stuff and we're watching the wider kind of marketing environment. And we're seeing that, you know, AI is becoming a thing. What do you guys think? You know, you're our customer. How are you using it? What are you doing to adapt? Has 
because it kind of hit your um, processes and your production already? Or are you kind of still just keeping a watch on this? And if they turn out to be saying, well, actually, no, we're, we're kind of seeing it in the media, but it hasn't really hit us yet. Is there an opportunity to maybe go hand in hand and explore together? Because being perceived as an, as an innovative, forward thinking, maybe even groundbreaking organizational brand can build that credibility and trust in your customer's mindset that maybe will really establish and nurture those relationships. So being commercial is about seeing the spin-off benefit in everything that you do internally, as well as with the building of those more intimate customer relationships as you go. And it is about, you know, harnessing these insights, not just about keeping these things to yourself, but then determining really what you should be doing from, you know, a collective understanding of what is going on. Um, John Russell, the former managing director of Harley Davidson, was, uh, was famously quoted as saying, yeah, the more you engage with customers, the clearer things become and the easier it is to determine what you should be doing. And so this is about becoming commercial by sharing and collaborating the ongoing customer insights that you're drawing into the organization. And of course, by implication, that means it's not just you. So once you start to become more commercially aware, so it's about reflecting on who can I drag along on this journey? Um, hopefully it will be in a positive way and they won't be kicking and screaming and reluctant to join you in becoming more commercial. But if you can feed into your systems and your processes and your meetings more consumer or customer insights, the things that are you know, coming up on your radar time and again, and you think, you know, I'm being told this stuff and I'm seeing this stuff really regularly, it must be a thing. Let's take that into the meeting. Let's talk about this stuff and find out if anybody else is sensing this too. So this power of customer engagement in clarifying through your team meetings, through your internal um, collaborations, through your conversations that you have within the business will help to clarify your business strategies, which will then by very nature start to shape the campaigns, the marketing plans and the potential you know, improvements on your customer engagement going forward. So you can see here, there's a real benefit of having these um, the opportunities to have feedback driven decision making within your marketing. So it kind of goes in multiple directions. It really is 360 degree reviewing of the opportunities, the feedback, the trends, the insights, the data, the intelligence that you're feeding into your marketing meetings and more broadly. So who in your sales team can feed into this debate? Who in your customer services can feed in here? And of course, every other point of customer contact within the organization. So by becoming more commercial, you hopefully will be starting to stimulate um, a lot more kind of, of these kinds of conversations. Um, there is a, a word, and if you haven't come across this word, I encourage you to have a little look at it because it's really quite an interesting one. Google this word, the word entrainment entrainment and what the word means is that it is about behaving in a certain way acting in a certain way sharing a certain kind of energy and that becomes a super attractor that becomes something that is almost irresistible for those around you to not follow suit um you will find that as soon as you start becoming more commercially aware, present and active, others around you will be following suit because it is irresistible. And this is a concept of entrainment. It's basically about helping people to match your energy level and enthusiasm. So I'm hoping that by maybe talking in a slightly faster pitch here, maybe slightly higher tone of voice than I would normally do, and with a bit of enthusiasm, that you will also be enthused by this particular conversation. If I took this whole subject and was very slow, very laborious, quite low key, low energy, you would not entrain to some of the opportunities in here. So hopefully by just the very nature of considering that word, you're able then to draw people along with you for the benefits that you'll undoubtedly encounter and hopefully they will too, so that you can collaboratively see some real kind of quick wins and some quick results that will embed this kind of more commercially focused approach across the organization. So not only is this a local thing, it is something that you can really help others to get on board with too. 
And then if you can do what I talk also a lot about, which is using data to empower and provide evidence for the decision making that comes from the opportunities that you're discussing, because you're now becoming more commercially focused and sensitive, you are now going to be making data driven, evidence based decisions that actually are more meaningful to the business. So rather than just thinking about, hey, that looks nice, or hey, that's going to improve our brand. I don't know how it's going to impact on our day-to-day -day numbers, but yeah, it's going to make us look good. And rather those vanity metrics or those ego-driven decisions, you can now start to make. Again, this is another really important filter. Some really great decisions based around interpreting the data that you see. Jeffrey Moore, author and consultant and uh, published in Data Science Central in, back in 2012, um, said the really interesting quote, which is, without big data, companies are blind and deaf, wandering out into the, onto the web like a deer on a freeway. And I thought, you know, how many times do we see this decisions made just when you're shooting from the hip or just because it feels right? You haven't got anything to back it up. And so you are like a deer wandering out onto the freeway. Well, I don't want to be the one that is the deer that's kind of seeing suddenly these fast approaching headlights. I'd much rather cross that freeway at the right time because I'm basing it on evidence and data, the right kind of data. So start to think about how you can empower yourself and those around you by underpinning these opportunities that just by being more commercially aware and just being more switched on and more um, able to be spotting the opportunities, underpin that with data. So go then looking for the data and the evidence to underpin what you're thinking as a tool for predicting and for driving more kind of steady strategy development for more kind of reliable decision making coming forward. So think about how data analysis will contribute to your marketing success, because it will and it can. So not just going into pitch a new idea that's based around, hey, I'm a commercial marketer, so therefore I've been listening to the marketplace and I understand how these are going to, these opportunities here that I've identified because they're trends and because Neil said so in that webinar, we want to be doing this actually do all of that, but then say, oh, and by the way, I've also got the data to back this up. Because look, when we look back about what we did last year, and this is how you know things transpired and what happened, this is kind of where we got to. But look, we're going to use this data to forecast and to analyze and then really interpret that data to forecast where this thing might go based on this new way of working. You've then got something that maybe talks more the language of the business. So rather than it just being you're talking marketing, getting very excited and it looks good and sounds great, but it's a little bit flaky because it's a bit thin on evidence, you can now start to talk a really, really profoundly deep story that is all of the above and is exciting and hopefully will enthuse people, but is also grounded in science as well. So commercially based marketers know how to balance the two. They don't lose sight of the, the, the creative bit. They don't lose sight of the being a marketer, working alongside the agency or the creatives to come up with funky new stuff. Of course, that is part of our role. We want to engage and infuse and um, hook in the target audience. But we've also got to be balancing that with really, really solid data driven evidence that will show how if we are doing this, it is most likely to impact on our numbers. So run the numbers underneath and then share those numbers alongside the creative. Um, and if you are in a creative kind of role, so you're a content producer or you are a more junior marketer and you haven't been challenged in this way, I'm now challenging you to kind of think alongside what is the potential ROI, the return on investment of doing this campaign or doing this piece of creative could I do it more effectively, more efficiently? And if I do it this way, what is the likely outcome? And can I challenge myself to come up with some numbers that even if they're not absolutely perfect, at least give us a framework that we can use to compare this version with the previous version, or that can use to us to compare this version we're doing now with maybe a future version when we try it again in the future so that we're continuously learning. So I'm going to challenge you now that you don't release 
any more content. You don't release any more creative. You don't just do a social media campaign or do some advertising without challenging yourself with these numbers and these insights to underpin the creative that you do, because that is taking the first early steps to becoming more commercial. And it really is because it will be talking a language that the rest of the organization gets. And once you talk their language, then the rest of it won't go over their head. The rest of it they'll be looking at and thinking, OK, so so entertain me then with your creative or, yeah, show me how that's going to work. Because you've bought them in both with their head and with their heart. So this works internally as well as externally, this stuff. This is what is being a commercial marketer. And it is about translating marketing efforts into commercial gains. Ultimately, that is what we're trying to do. You know, lovely quote here from Margaret Malloy, who is the global CMO of Siegel, um, quoted in Forbes again, a long time ago. But these quotes are still really applicable today when she said great execution is the ultimate differentiator. So even though we are going down the route of you know, just trying to balance the commercial gain with, you know, some great, great creative. It is about balancing this as great execution. So great execution is not just about does this thing look good? It is about does it sound good? And does it create great results at the end of it? So we're looking to turn creative marketing strategies into tangible business outcomes. And this is all about this is all about true and real execution at a commercial level in our marketing process. So think about the processes that you have right now. Do they actually talk numbers at every step or do you have a few numbers at the start? Yeah, we've got some smart objectives. So we're kind of playing lip service to the business and we've got a few KPIs, but actually they're not. We don't really monitor those as we go, if we're being truthfully honest. And when we come out at the end of it, yeah, it was all look how many followers we got. Whoa, we're marketers. Look at us. Or is it actually real? Do you have key performance indicators at every step of your production process? In other words, the timeline for working with your creative agency or the timeline for doing what you do in terms of writing content internally, you know, down to that level of detail. If you've got KPIs in terms of how fast you turn this stuff around and at what level of quality, because if you don't, there's an opportunity in here for getting more commercial because that's commercial language. Just because the stuff looks good at the end and produces something that looks pretty, that's not commercial. That's not commercial marketing. Commercial marketing is all of that, plus the KPIs, the key performance indicators underneath that explains the journey of how you got there. Because that, of course, is consuming resource within the organization. It costs to produce that stuff, either through budget or through people or through time. So being a commercial marketer is is really inherent in us really understanding at a deep level how much it costs to deliver what we do how much everything that we do costs so the time that you're spending looking at social media to get a sense of well neil said i've got to listen i've got to be out there listening to stuff but of course that in itself costs you know so i'm not here saying that you know you're going to have the luxury of lots of time because, of course, none of us do. But quantifying that time, putting a value against that time, even if you're not spending budget, there is still a cost to what you're doing. So this is really important in terms of your marketing process. So being a more commercial marketer means that you understand the price of what you're delivering, because then you can then say, well, OK, if we've invested that amount we need to now get a return. So then you can have a strategy or strategies for enhancing the outcome on the other side. And this is how effective execution sets successful marketers apart, because then you can go to your marketing director, or if you're the marketing director, you can then report this to the board. This is actually the true ROI. It isn't just the number of sales leads we got from that campaign. It's the true cost of what we do. And then you can start to reposition marketing, not necessarily using the word cost, but using the word investment. Because if you then can prove, because you've got the evidence, you've got the data, you've got the numbers to support this, that the investment from the business was $100, but the outcome through leads, through um, brand development, through inquiries, through whatever it is, your, your key performance indicators was $1,000, 
well, then you've got a 10 to 1 ratio in terms of your return on investment. And if you're not doing that with everything that you do, and yes, I said, with everything that you do, then there's an opportunity here to improve the commercial gains that you're instilling within your businesses and within your processes. This is important stuff. If you continue to just deliver creative, you're not talking the language of the business. As soon as you quantify the investment the business has made in that creative and then start to produce the outcomes in a quantifiable way, as well as making it look good. So I'm not saying that creative goes out the window. That's the furthest thing that I'm saying. But it's about balancing the objective with the subjective, the numbers with the creative and doing those two things hand in hand from this point onwards. And the point is because you can. If you're there thinking, well, it's all right for you to say that, Neil, maybe you've got data and systems and processes that allow you to see that stuff. I'm not saying you're going to be able to get this all in one go. I'm not saying that it's all there at the tip of your fingers where you just type in, oh, give me the cost of this or the investment of you know, what we've made in this. There will be gaps. But this, remember, from the very start was all about instilling a commercial mindset and being awake and being curious and challenging. And so innovation can come from, yes, new products and services. Yes, doing things differently. But it can also come from the back office stuff, from doing things more effectively and efficiently. A lot of innovation can come from within. So you know, it's not even stuff that is above the waterline. If you put and drew it as an iceberg, a lot of the stuff we're talking about here is still below the water. Two thirds of an iceberg, at least, is below the water. And the one third that's above the waterline is what most people think marketing does. The two thirds below the waterline is something that you can control and get some huge value from. And that in itself as well is about being a commercial marketer. And of course, it is about this balance of creativity and commercial acumen. It really, really is. You know, Steve Jobs once said that you can't just ask customers what they want and then try to give that to them. Because by the time you get it built, they'll want something new. I love that because it was like a real dose of reality. You know, I'm talking here about almost a theoretical, philosophical, kind of quite rhetorical kind of view of marketing. But it is possible. It really is possible on a practical level because we can bring creativity and foresight into our meetings, into meeting customer needs by really sort of cutting and dicing this intersection between being creative and being commercial. It is about this balance. It's about always thinking, I'm about to do something that's commercial. I'm about to do something that's um, you know, really based on numbers because I'm going to do some pricing. Or it's about, yeah, I've got to produce this report for the, the monthly meeting. And so it's all about the numbers and how many sales leads did we generate and support sales and stuff. But balancing that with creative opportunity and innovation by listening to the marketplace and really bonding those two things together. Don't see these two things as something that doesn't, you know, sort of gel together in this beautiful kind of um menu if you like this is a recipe what you're looking at here are the ingredients of a recipe and what we're able to do is if we can start to bond these two things together and make sure whenever you're talking to anybody both well within marketing but also within the rest of your team is that you're always mindful that okay it's time to talk a bit creative but then i'm going to follow that up with a little bit of commercial stuff and then having talked a little bit of commercial stuff, we're going to get creative again. So you're having this, remember the word I said earlier, interplay between the two. If you can do this, then you're able to constantly evolve and be innovative in any shape or form of how you define marketing. So it might come through from that meeting. It might come through from when you spot a piece of data. It might come through from when you've got this amazing little creative idea about how you're gonna do a you know, video short in YouTube or whatever the next time you post. It can come from everywhere and anywhere all at the same time. But as you do that little video short in YouTube to test it out, remember the commercial acumen. Remember to challenge. Hold on a minute. How much time am I investing in this? Oh, hold on. We've just had to subscribe to that app. OK, I put that into my investment pot. 
you know, how much um, energy, oh, I've got this other person as well who I need to kind of get that little video clip from. Great, well, they're investing time in this as well. So balancing that commercial and creative kind of mindset so that you've constantly got this interplay. And then all the time having that filter of, is this achieving and contributing to our business objectives? And actually, is it in line with our customer needs? So you've got these four things into playing. And this is really about, you know, this, this perfect kind of mindset, being constantly aware of the needs of the market, constantly then sort of looking for innovation from the trends that you see, being commercially astute and thinking about the investment of the resources in the organization and constantly trying to improve and become more efficient at the same time as being creative and being that sort of, you know, commercially savvy marketer that you can be. So do you see what I mean? You cannot do this stuff without being awake and aware. You really have to be on it all the time. But that, for some of us, is a real fuel. It is something that really allows us to, you know, not really feel like it's marketing. It's so much more. Um my, um, the marketoonist, um, if you uh, follow the Slack channel, uh, Cambridge Marketing College, uh, you'll see that uh, Kieran often uh, posts uh, Tom Fishburne's um, sort of uh, marketoonist uh, cartoons. And, you know, there's something from from him from quite a, quite a while ago now, where he said the best marketing doesn't feel like marketing. And it really doesn't. This won't feel anymore as though you're a marketer. You are a business entrepreneur. You're a commercial guru. You're an expert. You're a leader, um, irrespective of the role, irrespective of the level of seniority. If you start doing this stuff, you become more important than just purely marketing or than just purely content production, because you will have this really kind of um, infectious mindset that enables you to power and empower and enthuse others around you. And then everything then will feel seamless and it will seem customer friendly just by its own nature. Yeah, you'll be making more money and creating more revenue and creating more return on investment. Yes, you'll be having fun because everything is talking about future. It's talking about trends. It's talking about pre-filtered priorities. What is not to like? And then if you can bring in some of the theories and techniques that, you know, I didn't disrespect at the start when I said the old school of marketing is kind of dying out, some of the stuff will still apply. You know, some of those old tried and tested models are still have a part to play. But do you see this new world that we've already entered in, this new world of opportunity? It means that we can't do it just purely based on old marketing theory. We have to wake up. We have to be aligned. So in the modern world of business, it is useless to be a creative, original thinker unless you can sell what you create. David Ogilvy from 1963, Confessions of an Advertising Man, one of the tried and tested, you know, gurus of uh, advertising and communications. He was saying it. How many years ago is 1963? 60 years ago. Incredible to think that we're still having this conversation. There are still many marketers, many advertisers, many communicators who are still trying to get their head around this. But if you can transition from being oh, just a creator, I say just, but just a creative marketer to being a commercial marketer that includes creative, wow, isn't that going to make your ideas easier to sell both to your customers, but also within your organization? If you can find this synergy between being creative and commercial, it's going to allow you then to take some really significant steps forward. So the world is changing around you. The role of marketing is changing and evolving. This is opening up some huge opportunities. And I'm so, so pleased that I've been here at this moment in time with you to hopefully just pique your interest to maybe being a little bit curious about the numbers, a little bit curious about how this stuff might play out for you. Philip Kotler said, marketing takes a day to learn, but unfortunately it takes a lifetime to master. Now, if you haven't read any of Philip Kotler, most of us have, most of you will have as well. Um, we know this is right. You know, we're all still on the journey, as I said, right from the outset. But your marketing journey is quite simple. It really is. This is not about getting it right first time. This is not about saying, oh, my word, Neil, you've just opened up all this extra stuff for me to do. I haven't even got the time to do my job. How am I going to do this? 
Well, your marketing journey, I would challenge if you want to become a more commercial marketer, is simply to stay awake, to watch and to listen. Stay awake, watch and listen. And what I mean is all the time. OK, so just be consciously aware and awake. Yes, you know, I'm not advocating drinking lots of coffee, but if it means that you're constantly on it, then find the way that works for you. Yes, staying hydrated, maybe taking a bit more coffee, uh, whatever works for you. I mean, I'm, I'm jesting here, but it is about being awake, consciously challenging, being open to opportunities, using the filters that I've talked about, but watching and listening everything looking for little moments that might be sending you a signal that something is moving and changing and that you need to respond. It's also about accepting permission to fail. I'm giving you permission to fail here. OK, not failing big time, but failing at a micro level, because unless you take permission to fail, that not everything is going to work out perfectly. And sometimes if you go down this route, some of the stuff you're going to do isn't going to fall perfectly. And some of the stuff people might just not get and that the data and the evidence that you create maybe doesn't forecast an accurate future. But just accept that you've got the permission to try again next time. And you have to accept that permission to fail, because if you have fear of failure, and I know that some of you listening to this will say, yeah, but Neil, my culture in my organization is we don't allow failure. Everything has to be perfect and we're all over it. We've got a legal team who won't let us fail. I get it. I know it. I've heard it. I've been there. I Trust me, I do understand. But at a micro level, it surely has to be something that you allow yourself to do, because if you have fear of failure, you will never, ever be able to truly innovate and ever really become a commercially focused marketer. Because entrepreneurs who have entrepreneurial spirit and mindset are willing to fail, not every time, but they just know that because when they failed, they've learned more than when they were successful. But they're also savvy enough to know that they're staying awake and watching and listening so that is not going to be something they're going to do again. And that's the trick. So if anybody says to you, we don't fail in this organization, we need to get it right first time, then you can challenge that, hey, but if you allow me to fail just at a micro level, I will learn to get it even better the next time. And again, what is not to like? That's something your line manager, your boss, your director of the board would want to hear. The other thing you can do, of course, is surround yourself with specialists to become more commercially aware. You are not going to know everything. You're not going to become an economist or a finance manager or an accountant, probably um, at the drop of a hat if you aren't already. So surround yourself with specialists who around you or who could you get around you to support you in becoming more commercially aware? You know, you've got value you can bring to them. So why not? have a little bit of a bargaining. Why not have a little bit of a mentoring session two-way? You tell them and share with them a few of the trends of the marketplace. You tell them what you're up to with customers and consumers, and you then get back from them, well, okay, teach me how to kind of rate this. Teach me how you'd measure that. What are you using as a key, key performance indicator that I could use in my marketing? Start to surround yourself with specialists with whom you have proper conversations. That could get very interesting very quickly. So I'm not saying don't reskill and retrain and learn all this stuff. But if you want to kind of supercharge yourself, it probably is wise to surround yourself with specialists who can do a lot of this work with you and for you, whilst you add value to them as well. So reflect on who you need around your little ecosystem of becoming more commercially aware. And also, again, challenge yourself. And this is always an interesting one. Uh, this is not an original uh, one from me, but I'm going to kind of paraphrase it. Can I be a good marketer and a marketer for good? Can I be a good marketer and a marketer for good? In other words, can I do all of this stuff and actually represent what is really the most important thing that our organization does? And that is going forward, work to a higher purpose to a higher reason for coming together and operating as a business. Because if I can start to stimulate that, both in terms of our sustainability footprint, both in terms of the way that we add and bring value to all stakeholders and the planet and the community around us, 
then I'm not only being good for marketing within the business, but I'm actually marketing for good, for everybody's good, for everybody and everything's well-being. And that would be almost the ultimate challenge. If you're listening or watching this and you're thinking, I kind of do most of this, Neil, kind of stretch me on a little bit further, then I would say there's your biggest challenge. This is almost the ultimate challenge to a marketer, to be a good marketer doing all of this stuff, but then also be a marketer for good, driving the debate and the observations and the conversations of how and when and why and where you are going to be a, an organization for good, working to a higher value-driven, purpose-led um, value and strategy into the future. And that, to me, is almost the ultimate panacea that we're all really searching for, which is, you know, what is the ultimate role of marketing? Well, it is just that, being commercial, being creative, being innovative, but also being marketing for good.